In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable drip cake. It's Carolyn. <clears throat> I got a thing in my throat. <laughs> welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm a professional cake decorator just outside of Philly. I've been decorating cakes since 2002 and on this channel I share my tips and tricks and ways that I bake and decorate cakes to help you along your journey. Uh, I'm running out of breath. <laughs> so if you'd like to join me hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified whenever I release a new video. So like I just showed you in the beginning I'm going to show you how to make this adorable drip cake. I can split screen it here again so you can see and I feel like I have to shift to the right so I'm even in frame. <laughs> so what you want to do, um, I'm going to link everything that I use below first of all and second of all this is on a double barrel cake and I will, I'll link how I ice cakes, how I do the double barrel cake, like everything will be linked below. But I've never done this with a full size bottle. I think it will be too heavy. That's why I use the mini bottle. Now I can't link those. You can go to the store and try to find them. Um, but yeah, and all the, the candy and the extra stuff that I put on there, you're just going to have to figure out the different things that you want. And before we start, I just want to let you know that I designed my first free guide for you guys. It's a birthday, birthday cake design blueprint, and it will help you come up with ideas to design your birthday cakes, and I will link that below as well. So let's get into the video. All right, to start, I'm going to first make the pink drip. This is going to be, it's a white chocolate ganache made with water. I will show you how I do that. I love these candy melts. I got these at the local craft store at Michael's. I don't know if they have them on Amazon. I can try to find them and link them below, but they melt so well, so much better than the Wilton ones that I've used before. This is Sweet Tooth Fairy brand. I wanna make this pink, but I don't have pink candy melts. So I'm gonna use white and add a little bit of red to make it pink. So I want six ounces. I guess I'll do six ounces. It's a better angle. I have this scale here. Put the bowl on, set it to zero, and then I'm going to measure out six ounces of the candy melts. I don't need that much red to get it to be a light pink, so maybe like two wafer. Should I do three? Ah, I don't know. Three might be too much. So I can always add more, but you can never take it away. So. That's good, 5.9 ounces. So I'm gonna put this in the microwave in 30 second intervals to melt it and stir in between all the 30 seconds and then we will continue. All right, now this looks pretty good. See the two wafers really got it to be a nice light pink. If I added another one, it would probably be a little too dark. I didn't also mention that I like to melt in a glass bowl because the glass bowl stays warm and helps melt the chocolate as well. I'm gonna add a little water to this. I have about an ounce and a half of water in this cup and I'm just going to set this to zero and pour, I'm gonna start by pouring in about a half an ounce. That sounded gross. <laughs> and start to stir it. Now, you'll see as you start to stir it that it's gonna to start to seize up. It's gonna get kind of chunky and chunky is a disgusting word too, but it's gonna get it's going to get really thick and that's okay and we're going to continue to add more water now when you're mixing also you want to make sure that you're not mixing too fast so you're not whipping air bubbles into this so just be gentle that's why i like that the bowl is warm because it also helps to keep the chocolate melted and we still have to thin this out a little bit it's still a little ch a little chunky you see the chunks so let's set this to zero and add about another half ounce in. It's better to work in small batches, so add a little bit of water at a time and mix, and then add a little bit more and mix. And I do like to stir with a little spatula, um, a rubber scraper, that way you can scrape the whole bowl as you're stirring. <clears throat> All right, now, you tap out some air bubbles. Now, obviously, this is way too thin right now to put on a cake. So what you have to do, I'm just gonna take a little plate or something just to cover this. You can cover it with plastic as well. And just let it start to cool probably about 10 minutes. 
and then we'll be able to start using it. So just setting this aside. All right, while I'm waiting for this to cool off a little, I'm gonna prepare the bag. So I have a neutral bullet. So I just like to use this cup because it's really tall. And I have an icing bag. Fold the top over. Don't cut the tip off yet. And I'm just gonna put it in here. And I'm gonna pour that in this bag and then cut the tip off to make the drip. All right, I have my cake right out of the refrigerator. The icing is cold and it's solid. The cold and the icing, the chill and the icing is gonna help set the ganache. This is a double barrel cake. I have a video on how I make these tall one tier cakes. I can link that below. I have my ganache here. So it is still thin, but it's not as runny as it was before. Now it's just, it's just kind of trial and error to try to figure out what temperature you need the ganache to be. So what I would do, well, let's pour it in the bag first. I don't want my arm to be in the way and it probably is, but whatever. Now what I want to do, I just like to take a clip, one of these clips here, fold the ends in and fold the top down. Just makes it a little more secure. I like to have a paper towel handy just to catch any extra drip. And I'm not going to have all of it facing down because it's going to run out. So lift it up a little bit and cut the tip off. Not, don't cut too much off the end. It's going to run out too much. Just cut a little bit off of the top. Now you could do a little practice run down the side. Nice. Okay. So what I want to do, I'm going to start with the back of my cake. Just in case it's too runny, I can stop and continue a little later. So turn this around to the back. What I'm going to do is just kind of guide it. I don't want to just squeeze it and hold it upside down. I want to use two hands to hold this. I hope this isn't confusing. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you are holding it so the drips drip straight down and don't hold it on an angle or else your drips are going to curve. So I'm going to start around the edge of the cake and do the drips and then fill in the top. So I'm going to rest this on the end, hold it, let it drip down, and then move over, hold and let it drip. And I'm going to vary the lengths of the drips. So some of them I let sit for a little longer. And some of them I just like do a few short ones and then over to a longer one, right? So I like to have a little variation in it. Move over and drip. Maybe this one I will hold a little longer. Right, so it's all about finding some variation. You don't have, you could do them all exactly the same if you want. And I'm pulling it back and then letting it go down. Pull it back and then let it drip, you know? So this ganache is still kind of runny, but you can see, you could see that the, the chill and the icing is helping the ganache set and it's catching the drips before they get all the way down to the bottom. Now this is a three, uh, it's a six inch cake, sorry. So I use six ounces for six inches. I might not need all of that. And then I'm gonna fill in the top. So just turning the turntable with my bottom hand and just kind of filling in the areas. Good, so there's a nice little variation in this drip. The top is not perfect, that is okay. There's gonna be a lot of stuff on top, so we don't have to worry about this. What I wanna do now is put this back in the refrigerator to let the ganache um, get a little hard. Not hard, but it's gonna solidify so I can work with it without messing it up. So put it back in the refrigerator probably for at least an hour or so, and then we will continue. All right, now I wanna make these rose gold Oreos. So. I got these Lady Gaga Oreos because they're pink, but they were a limited edition. I'm not sure if they have them anymore. So I would get Oreos that are a light color rather than the darker. Although I, I don't know how it'll turn up. Maybe the darker one will be better, but you'll just have to see. So I want to paint these rose gold. I have this Rollcom rose gold color here. I get it at sugardelights.com. I can link it below. I'm not affiliated with them at all. 
I have a plate here and I'm just going to take the lid and tap it against the jar to get some of the rose gold to come out. And also I will paint some of these little fondant balls as well. I just, these are marshmallow fondant and I just ripped little pieces off, rolled them into different size balls and set them aside. I'm gonna put, as you can see, I have some pink balls on here and some rose gold. So I'm not gonna paint them all rose gold, but some of them I will. I like to have my non-dominant hand with a glove so I don't get rose gold all over my hands. And I'm gonna mix this with a little bit of lemon extract. You can also use high proof alcohol like Everclear. The alcohol evaporates out of the extract and the, the vodka. So it's not gonna, there's not gonna be any alcohol in the decorations. You just wanna get it to the right consistency. And for the one, for the little balls here that I paint, I'm gonna set it on a paper towel to dry. I don't know why, I just prefer to do that. So just picking it up and just start to paint. I'll probably need to do two coats on everything. So we're gonna do one coat and let it dry. That, that, this dries really fast, the lemon extract, so it probably only needs about five minutes to dry. And then I could do another coat. Now if you find that this is starting to get too thick, you can always add a little more lemon extract. If it's too thin, just let it sit for a minute or two and the alcohol will evaporate and it'll be a little thicker. And now I took the Oreos apart so I can um, paint them and then I'm just going to fill it with regular icing. So since the inside is going to be facing in, you don't have to paint the whole inside, really just around the rim because you're going to be able to see that part. And then paint the whole cookie. And these will probably need two coats as well. I like these Lady Gaga ones because they have like little hearts on them. And I don't know what this is. I think this is, oh, this is her in a dress. <laughs> but I like the pattern on these, although, you know, they don't really make them anymore. So yours will just, they'll just say Oreo on it. Not a big deal. So getting a coating on all of them, let them dry. Let everything dry for about five to 10 minutes. And when it's dry, dry to the touch then do another uh, coat at, to make sure that the rose gold is coating the whole thing and then we will continue. And I also forgot to mention that you don't only have to use rose gold for this. I have done it before where I painted the cookies silver or you can paint them gold. So this roll come coloring comes in different colors. So if you're not doing rose gold cake and you wanna do silver or gold, you could do that as well. I think it comes with other colors uh, other than silver gold and rose gold, I'm just not sure, but you can check the website and see what you can find. I will link that below. And now this is dry to the touch, so I'm just gonna do the second coating, which is really gonna start to cover all of the pink. And you might not be able to see, but you can see, make sure you also paint around the edges as well. Um, but yeah, just trying to fill in any spaces. I find it, if you tap it, give it a little tappy. It's a, I always make the Happy Gilmore reference, but it's one of my favorite movies. Um, it helps fill it in a little better as you tap the color in rather than just paint over because there's a lot of nooks and crannies in Oreos, if you will. All right, now that's all finished. Gonna set the balls aside and I'm just gonna put a little bit of icing to sandwich these back together. I have, this bag has a 1M, M like Mary tip in it and it's just a nice swirl tip that we're gonna use to make these little swirls a little later. Squeeze a little bit on, not too much, and then place one on top. I wanna make sure that they're, everything's facing the right way. And then squeeze together. So squeeze a little bit. and put your Oreos back together. All right, and do that for all of them. All right, now I want to assemble the, the cake. The, the ganache is not hard, but it's just not um, gonna get messed up very easily anymore. And I have all the decorations that I'm gonna need. Now, 
When I posted this picture, so many people asked me how I got this bottle into the cake and have it secure without it falling out. And I secured it with a skewer. So I'm gonna put this in the top first and then we will add everything else. This is a 187 milliliter bottle. So it's a little bottle. It's I have huge man hands, but it's just a little bit bigger than my hands. It's not that heavy. So I'm going to push this down into the cake, which is going to secure it. I wiped the bottom or I, I wiped the bottle down to get just so it was clean before I stuck it in the cake. So make sure you're looking at the cake from the front. I chose this as the front because I like the way the drip looks the most this way. And I want to put it in just in on an angle. I mean, you could do it straight up and down if you want to, but I'm going to do it a little bit on an angle. So I'm going to start to, I don't want it too close to the edge because then it's going to mess up the icing and it's going to poke out. So I want to bring it in a little bit and start to push it down. And now it's in the cake pretty good. Okay, now there's gonna be decorations all around here, so you're not gonna be able to see that. But I do want to secure I do want to secure this to make sure that it doesn't fall over. And the way I'm gonna do that is with two bamboo skewers. Now, this is a double barrel cake. There is a piece of cardboard in the middle. So when I hammer these down into the cake, the cardboard is going to also secure the skewers as well. You'll see what I mean. I wanna use two skewers so the bottle can rest on two of them. If I just have it rest on one, it could roll on either side. So what I wanna do, you have to find the correct angle. So if I start to push this in on an angle too far out, it's gonna poke out the bottom. So I wanna find a good angle and start pushing it down into the cake. Now I can hide the skewer with some decorations, so that's not a problem. Now the trickiest part <laughs> is to start hammering this in and not hit the bottle with the hammer, right? So I'm just starting to tap it a little bit. And I just heard it go all the way down into the cake board. So that is secure. This is sticking here and I just want to give it a little more security. So. I'm gonna put another one just next to it. These skewers are about 12 inches long. So I'm going to put it right, like a little space in between, and then right next to it. And there, now this bottle is resting on two skewers that are going down through the cardboard into the bottom cake drum. So it's really, really secure and it's not gonna fall over. Got that done, now we wanna add the little decorations. So the first time I made this, I got lint truffles. So I'm gonna use those again. These are strawberries and cream. They're actually pretty delicious, I had some of them. And some of them I'm going to unwrap and others I'm not gonna unwrap and I'm just gonna leave the pink on. I got these on Amazon. I'm sure you can go to the store, but everything's easier to get on Amazon. And now I just want to start to assemble things onto the cake. I have another icing bag here. It just has a number four round tip on it, just with white icing. So I can use this to secure some of the decorations to the cake. So let's see, looking off this picture, maybe I want to start by taking this big bag with this one M tip on it and make a couple swirls. So I can do a swirl in the front, so I'm holding it straight up and down, put it down and just start turning it around and start lifting it up, stop squeezing and lift up. And I just wanna do some random ones. So I don't wanna put them all together. I'll just do some random ones. And now starting to put some of the other stuff on. So it's really, <laughs> It's just kind of haphazard. It's just put on as I wanted it to be. So I'm going to try to find, there's a crease here and it doesn't look right and I want this one to face forward. So I'm just gonna put a little icing on the back here and stick it down. Maybe, you know what? I wanna trim these plastic pieces. They're a little long. So I'm just gonna trim them down so they're not 
taking up too much space. It's a little easier to work with when they're like that. Ah, really? So putting this down into the cake. I'm just starting to take other decorations. And it just depends how much icing I need. So I wanna put a little more icing here so it can support the Oreo, right? So if I need a little bit of icing, maybe for one of these balls, I'll just use this small four, um, number four tip. And when I need more icing behind some of the decorations, I'll just use this bigger tip. So really just, I'm gonna have to squeeze some more icing around, you know, putting the swirls where you want them, putting the balls and the Oreos and arranging it just however you want it to look. And to try to cover these skewers, I'm going to put a swirl here, swirl back there, right? You, you're going to be able to see a little bit of it, but not a big deal. And then I can stick something like an Oreo over here just to distract the eye a little bit when you look up there, right? So just decorating it as you will. I'm gonna cut the ends off of all of these. And some of them I'm gonna unwrap. I'll say I'll unwrap about four of them. Putting a little icing on the bottom, sticking it down. Right, and then just filling it in. And <laughs> I know I don't have to really talk through this, but just putting things where you think they'll look the best. And I almost forgot I got a topper for this. So I did get this on Amazon as well. I can link this below. But I want to stick this in where it'll look good. A little bit to the side. Good. And now I can continue decorating around it. All right, I just decided I wanna add some of these as well. I have these little gold colored chocolate balls. Get a little icing on the back to make it stick. There's candy wrappers flying everywhere. Yeah, I kinda like those too, all right. I like to use the icing swirls to sometimes give me a little height so I can get decorations up a little higher. All right, now I just want to put a few, I want to say dragées, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Dragées, it's not draggies. <laughs> I think it's French or whatever, but I have these. And I like to put a little bit of piping gel on the lid. All right, these are four millimeter ones, so they're not too big, not too small. I'm just going to sprinkle a couple of these on top of the piping gel. Take some tweezers and just put some random ones. Maybe I put one up here in the ganache. And then I could do another one just down in the buttercream. Now just giving it a little more oomph, if you will. And then if I want to put some more um, around the cake, I can, you know, just like I said before, finding where things can go and, and look the best. There's really no way for me to tell you how to do that. You just gotta kinda look and put things where you want them to be. I'm gonna put some of these smaller balls on here. Now, I don't want them to fall off the cake, so I have a toothpick here. I'm gonna break it, break a little piece off of it so it's not that long. I'm going to stick it in and then I'm gonna angle it down into the cake. So put a little bit of piping gel behind it so it'll stick. And just angle it down, and this way it'll give it a little more support so it's not just gonna fall off the cake, right? Same thing, break a piece off. Kinda of angling it down. And push in. 
Ah. I made this happy birthday Caitlin sign. Now I I couldn't I couldn't film this. There was just too much going on at the moment. But um I printed this white part out on my edible image printer and just cut it out and painted a ribbon rose gold and put it on top. I do have a video to show you how I make a name banner out of um, edible markers and I will link that below. But I don't have a video yet on how I make an edible image banner. I will make one of those soon. But I'm just this is just like a little extra. Actually, I don't need this here. Take that out. <laughs> Should have put this on first. So happy birthday, Caitlin. I want to give it a little curve to it. Yeah. So I can stick some icing behind it wherever it's gonna to touch the cake. And just push that down. And now I can put the other decorations back in front of it. So if you don't have an edible image printer and you can't print, I just went on Microsoft Word, typed out happy birthday Caitlin, changed it to yellow, and printed it out on the edible printer, the size that I wanted it. I didn't want it longer than six inches. Uh, but I will link the, the banner with the edible markers. I will link how to do that below. And here is your pretty everything pink drip cake. <laughs> And I just forgot the final step that I wanted to do. I just want to add a little bit of luster to this. So I have this PME edible luster spray in pearl. So you have to shake it up really well. And it does kind of, there's an overspray to it. So I'm just going to take this cake box lid and hold it behind the cake to prevent the spray from going everywhere if I can. So I'm just going to spray in little spurts, right? And the glitter is probably going to go everywhere and that's okay but it'll just add a little bit of shine to the drip and just make everything look a little more shimmery. This lid literally is doing nothing. <laughs> it's a very subtle difference. You probably can't see it on camera, but it does make it look a little shimmery. So here you go, here is the totally adorable drip cake with everything on it. I'm sure these are called something, but I don't know what they're called. I just call them everything cakes. And I did put another little swirl of icing by the bottle just to disguise the skewers that are sticking up. I'm gonna put this down, don't wanna drop it. Now this cake design, the original design is by, I think it's called Designer Cakes by Paige in the UK. And she was so wonderful because I got a request to make her design and I emailed her and she told me how she got that luster on onto the cake by using that PME luster spray, which I will link below as well. Um, what else do I want to say about this? But putting those skewers, uh, last time I posted this cake, I had so many people ask me how that bottle is staying there and not falling over. And it's so hard to explain it rather than show you that putting the two skewers side by side down into the cardboard into the cake board is really gonna prevent it from shifting. So that bottle ain't going nowhere. I mean, if you slam on the brakes and the cake goes flying, the bottle probably won't stay in position, but then that's your fault. <laughs> but anyway, I really can't think of anything else to say. I hope you like this video. I love these kind of cakes. They're so cool and so much fun to make. So if you have any questions or comments or things that I didn't cover, leave them below and I will get back to you. And you can follow me on social media. I am on Instagram and Facebook and I have my website and I will link everything below as well. And please watch these videos next and hit the subscribe button and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. It really helps out my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all and I will see you on the next one. Bye.